So now that we've looked at a basic characteristic trait of vascular plants, namely their vascular tissue, we're going to continue our discussion on vascular plants by entitling the next flowchart Vascular Plants 2. And in this flowchart, we're going to be primarily focusing on the fact that vascular plants exhibit something known as spore variation. And spore variation is nicely illustrated in the textbook on page 625. So take a look at that page as we go through the steps necessary to understand spore variation. Now remember, a spore from a vascular plant, which is predominantly sporophyte in its life cycle and its dominant structure in terms of its entire alternation of generations, is going to be something that's haploid. And so there are basically different forms of the spore that can happen and thus different forms of overall vascular plant spores that can be seen in nature. And so we break these down into two main components, two main spore types, let's say, or variants. There's the idea of a homosporous spore production, which is, happens in some vascular plants. And so the key thing to look here is the root of homo, and spore is referring to spore-like. This is going to be meaning the same spore production. And then we also have the contrast, which would be uh, easily termed the heterosporous spore production. And so we'll go through both of these now and what differentiates them. Of course, the name differentiates them. That should give you a good idea of what we're going to be looking at. But specifically in the homosporous spore production, we're going to see that this is actually seen in most seedless vascular plants. So those without those seeds are going to be uh, the vascular plants that possess this type of spore production. So most seedless vascular plants. In addition, the basic premise and definition of this is the following. Homosporous spore production plants that do this are going to have one type of sporogonium. So I'll write this down. Have one type, let me rewrite that, T type of sporogonium. And we know what a sporogonium is, that's that spore producing structure within plants. So here, because you have one type of sporogonium, this one type of sporogonium produces only one type of spore. One type of spore key thing here, one type. One type of sporogonium means one type of spore. Homosporus, the same spore production, same spore over and over and over again. Now what's going to eventually happen is that that spore, the homosporous productive spores, are going to uh, develop into eventually uh, a bisexual, so having both sexes, male and female, gametophyte. And that's how the basic sort of life cycle of these vascular plants works. So we develop into a bisexual gametophyte. This would mean that this eventual structure, this gametophytic structure, would have a ability to produce, and it does, produces both sperm plus egg. And that's basically it in, in terms of understanding homosporous sperm, uh, spore production. Happens in the same sporogonium, thus you have the same spores developing eventually into a structure that's known as a gametophyte, both sperm and egg, bisexual structure. In the heterosporous spore production, it's almost exactly the same except for the fact we now have different spores. Specifically, what's going to happen here is that we have two types of sporangia, that's the plural of sporangonium. So two types of sporangia, which would directly indicate, based off of this deductive reasoning you can do here, two types of sporangia would mean two types of spores. And that's exactly what we see here in a heterosporous spore production. So two types and two types, one type and one type. That's the major difference between these types of spore production. The two types that are produced are as follows. You get a megasporangium structure. So we have a megasporangium structure. And then we also have what is known as a microsporangium structure. So these are the two types of sporangia, appropriately named microsporangium, the singular, and megasporangium, the other singular. So what do these both do? In the megasporangium, 
This is going to be a structure that produces megaspores via meiosis. And that makes sense because of the name, and that's what they produce, megaspores via meiosis. Now you might already have a basic idea of what these megaspores might be if you think of the structure because megaspores are simply going to be haploid and think of structures that are haploid and the large haploid structure versus a small haploid structure. We'll get to that in just a second. In the microsporangia, we'll contrast this by directly stating that here we produce microspores. So microsporangium produces microspores. So that's our immediate contrast, microspores. Again, also via meiosis because we're at a sporangium structure and that sporangium structure always uses meiosis. Okay, next logical step would be the fact that the megaspores that develop via meiosis in this structure, the megasporangium structure, are going to develop into the fem female gametophyte. Develop into a female gametophyte. And over here, what's going to happen is the opposite. This is going to develop into the male gametophyte. Develop into the male gametophyte structure. And so if we continue this sort of contrast and compare between these two, this is going to finally give us a structure that eventually produces because it's the female, because it's the megaspore, because it's the megasporangium of a vascular plant, this is going to give us a final structure that produces an egg in, and eggs always come from, the archegonium. Archegonia for the plural. Egg, archegonium, female, megaspore, know those facts. And then on the male side, very simple, exactly what you would think. Here we produce sperm, so this structure produces sperm, and that's going to be in the antheridium. Antheridium. Antheridium, sperm, male, microspores, remember that combination. Juxtapose that with the megasporangium combination, both of which are seen in a heterosporous vascular plant. And that's our spore variation between the homosporous plants and heterosporous plants. And we'll see how this plays a, a little bit more of a role as we go through plant diversity in more detail in the next couple of lectures.